Well, thank you for joining us for this special bulletin. I'm here with Todd Bentley, and we want to get into some issues. You know, we're, we are not at all finished with the uh, issues concerning marriage and divorce and all those things. We, uh, we're, yeah. we want to get into much more depth. We want to study these things out. We're, we're processing a lot of the questions that have come in, and we want to address them. And uh, so just by doing these videos this week on a different subject doesn't mean we've gone past or forgotten the other things either. We just want to go deeper into them and be more solidly established. But, yeah. you know, one of the big controversies that came up at Lakeland was concerned the healing angel Emma and uh, that she was a female angel. And a lot of people made a big deal out of that, said that's occultic, that's, you know, new age, all kinds of bizarre things. I saw them and, and said there's neither male nor female in angels. The Lord said that, and that is true. I, I mean, when the Lord says something like that, you can take it to the bank. That is true. Angels are neither male nor female, and yet it is clear in Scripture they appear as both male and female, okay? They appear to Abraham as men. That's right. <laughs> you know, with they the did. Lord. That's right. And if they can appear as men, they can appear as women. They can appear as whatever. And then you have the, the uh, Zechariah 5, 9, where you have these two female angels. That's it's right. as clear as it can be. That's right. And uh, so they can appear any way they want. We know they appear as men and women because yeah. Paul talked about in the first century, they even entertained angels and weren't aware of it. So they, they must have come as either a man or a woman. And we were hospitable to them. Yeah, even knowing they would they eat. Angels. They would do whatever. Yeah. But when Abraham, they ate. They did everything we did, you know. And uh, so they can do that. They have this ability to take on the form. What you need, what we do need to understand, what we need to address now, angels are messengers. One thing they're not, you know, we, we do not worship angels. No. Uh, we don't command angels. Even Jesus didn't do that when he walked the earth as a man. No. He said, if I ask my father, yeah. will he not send a he legion directs. of angels? You, you know, and uh, so, but they are messengers. And this is normal Christianity. It's normal in scripture. And if you really believe the Bible, yeah. it's not just believing that all that stuff happened. It is believing God to see it happen in your own life. That's true faith in the Bible. That's right. A religious spirit seeks to give honor to what God has done in the past in order to persecute what he's doing. Okay. Now, the issue is, can an angel come with the name Emma? Well, if they can come, if a male can come with the name Michael or Gabriel, or an angel appear that is neither male nor female, but yeah. they come and appear as men yeah, and give their names, they can give a female name, but that name means grace. It means healing in some, some form. And right. that is a message. God is coming to do healing. He wants to do healing he here. Well, the yeah. book of Revelation, you have the seven churches. And each of the churches had a messenger assigned to each church. Yeah. Now, I, I believe that those angels that were assigned to Ephesus and to uh, you know all the different churches, the seven churches, I believe that the angel took on... His assignment yeah. for, for those particular churches. I mean, I mean, clearly God. Sure. I believe God assigns to every church, every ministry, every individual, an angel. In some cases, many angels. And and the nature of that angel, whether it's their name or how they appear, you you can see it manifest in in that person's life and ministry. Just like He assigned angels to the seven churches of the, uh, in the Book of Revelation. Why wouldn't He assign um, angels? You have a healing gift. He may assign a healing angel. You have a a financial gift, he may assign specific angels that work in the realm of finance or warfare in the specific realm of warfare because, uh, you know, they he's given an angel's charge over us. They're mm -hmm. guardian angels. And I believe that there's a whole lot more angels than demons. And we're involved in spiritual warfare. I know that I don't want to be involved in the battle. I want the Lord to do the battle. And yeah. the Lord uses his hosts of heaven to do the battle for me. So it should be common that angels are intervening in our life, bringing breakthrough in our life, bringing divine protection in our life. And, um, you know, people ask all the time about Emma. And, and I do believe that an angel can take on a female form. But I, I made it clear in the last bulletin that we did that, that I've had experiences uh, on several occasions with an angel by the name of Emma. And, uh, that angel is not, you know, the healing angel that I make reference to 
in my testimony when I talk about the angel of the Lord and the healing angel. But but I have had an experience and many other experiences with many other angels. Yeah. And, 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 and we don't make a doctrine out of it. If, if there's a doctrine or a theology, it's we believe in angels. But you don't make a doctrine out of, well, this specific angel came and brought breakthrough. So now we have a doctrine about breakthrough angels yeah, or financial angels. We have a doctrine <laughs> about finances. No, it was just an angel came with a message from heaven to bring a breakthrough in your life financially. That's it. It's not a theology. Yeah. We've had a lot of experiences we'll share, and even though we share them and share them as experiences, we don't make doctrine out of experiences either. That's right. The scriptures are for that. We don't accept as anything is doctrine in the church that you can't clearly point to in scripture. Okay, that, that's that's sure, and that's the wrong use of prophecy. Anybody who uses prophecy to try to, to uh, either expound or to give a new revelation or doctrine, yeah. You know, that's a wrong use of prophecy. Prophecy is for the strategic will of the Lord, for the Lord to, you know, give us direction and guidance, but not for new doctrines. The scriptures are for that and the scriptures alone. We've always held to that in spite of all the accusations. But the, uh, the thing about angels and the reason we think this, it's good that it's an issue. It's good that it's being brought up. It's because we're going to have to get more and more used to this and more and more used to visitations yeah. from angels. Now, angels come, I believe, as I shared in the last bulletin, when you start seeing a lot of angels, it's not so much them coming into your realm. They're in this room right now. Yeah. But we can't see them. When you start seeing them, it's because your eyes are open to see into their realm more than them coming into your realm. They can come into your realm, but more it should be that as we enter the spiritual realm, start seeing the spirit like Elisha, when the whole army comes against him, his, his servant goes outside and sees his army and says, we're dead. Elisha comes outside. He's not the least bit upset. He said, no, those who are with us are much greater than those who are with the world because he could see into the spirit realm. And it seemed simple and common to him. <laughs> Yeah, it hey, was don't him. worry about it. <laughs> I know. I mean, to him it was normal. And he said, Lord, just open my servant's eyes so he'll calm down. Wham, he sees all the angels, the, the chariots of fire yeah. and all this. He said, man, those yeah. guys, that army doesn't have a chance. Yeah. And if we could really see into the heavenly realm, which I believe is normal Christianity, mm -hmm. We have a better covenant. It says in 2 Corinthians 3, we're supposed to be seeing, we're supposed to be experiencing a greater glory than what Moses experienced. 2 Corinthians 3, read it for yourself. Yeah. I think a big problem that people have with, with the angels, and rightly so, mm -hmm. is all the abuse and 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 the lack of fruit that's come after somebody's claimed they've had this oh, great yeah. big spiritual experience. The, the 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 deception, the mm -hmm. false doctrines, all of those things. I mean, I know from being here, Rick, and I've 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 told some of my closest friends and associates. I've said I've never met a group of Christians. And I mean, I've been around the world and plugged into all different kinds of churches and ministries. And I'm not just saying this because there's a restoration process here. I truly believe this. That that there is this is one of the deepest. As far as Christians in maturity, I find that there is a maturity that's here that mm -hmm. I've not seen in a lot of other Christians, other places I go. And I say that because of the love that you have for the truth. You're going to defend the truth. You're not going to compromise the truth. Mm -hmm. I mean, just how many books you've written and how, how much you've mm -hmm. actually studied. I know your life and your commitment mm -hmm. every day to prayer and the Word of God. Mm -hmm. and, 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 and yet you have all these other experiences, but everything's anchored in the Word. And mm -hmm. I, I think that when we talk about these things, I, I think a lot of people believe in the angels, but, but they see people running around having these experiences that aren't anchored in the Word, and they don't know the Word, and they don't preach the Word. They preach experiences. And, and, mm -hmm. and that's where I think a lot of people, when you mention I saw an angel, a red flag goes up in them, not because they go, well, I don't know if I believe you saw an angel, Todd, so much, just as that rubs me wrong, because in the past, I, when I hear that kind of language, I saw an angel, I think of all the mess that comes along with it. That mm. person never preached the Word, and, and I don't know that their life was committed to the Word. Yeah. And, and I think that's important. These are things we have to look at. We have to be... You know, we're also warned to don't be puffed up by these things and watch out for those who are puffed yeah. up and using them and are not speaking according to the word. But we want to address these because we believe this is going to become more common. 
but there's got to be a solid biblical foundation for these experiences. You've got to be able to recognize the false angels, the wrong angels, That's the right. demonic spirits That's and right. things like this. So we'll be covering this in a little more depth too. Thank you for joining us.